All right, got my trusty paintbrush ready. And these are the colors I'm gonna play with today. Major one on this color shift over here. So this should be fun. And I've also got a gray tumbler prepped and ready to go. Okay, focus on the big gray thing. Not gonna do it. Oh well, <laughs> hang on. All right, so I'm doing a little bit of a test. I've got my tumbler all primed uh, with a paint and primer. Uh, it's in a flat color, and yes, it's gray. But I wanted to see if it would make a difference whether it was black or gray in this case. I don't think it will. I'm just curious. I needed to prime them anyway, so it's like, you know, it was easy to do, test that out. And also, um, I was checking out on the paint and primer stuff, this is the next day after I did it in the cold and I came in and there's a little bit of a run area right there, but it's like not really changing much in the texture. So I think this was a success. So both my cups and the spray paint was already warmed up in within the house or studio area. So I just zipped outside and sprayed it and brought it back in immediately and set this up to dry. So it seemed to do okay. Now it was mild uh, breeze conditions. So, and I think the temperature was about maybe 40, 42, something like that. Now, if it was definitely in the freezing times, I wouldn't have tried this. And if it was snowing or a lot of moisture in the air, I probably wouldn't have tried this either because I definitely know moisture will affect it big time. And it also makes the air colder too. So, but I think I pushed it pretty well and it did fine. And <laughs> I sprayed a whole bunch of them <laughs> in a hurry. So this was, this was kind of fun. Anyway, so let's get started with this guy. Got to balance precariously there on a point just for a moment. Okay, if you're not familiar with this, I did these tumblers um, a few days ago, and I just, I didn't know if it would work, but I used some acrylic paints as the base, and then obviously I've got resin on top of that, but I did big brush strokes, thinking that it would be a really nice background for something simple on top, and I only worked with a couple colors of resin on top, so I knew it would be kind of like a peekaboo where it would peek through, um, but also set the tone for the piece. So the only colors that were used in the resin were uh, a white, a gold, and there's a little bit, you can see, actually you can't see too much. Okay, you see the little blue shimmer there? That was also the interference or chameleon color that was in there. I don't remember which one was which, but it seems to be just a blue. Anyway, um, so that was the only thing that was in the resin but all the other colors come from what I painted before. So we're just gonna be playing with this and seeing how far we can take it. But this is kind of my own spin on, uh, literally spin on tumblers. I didn't mean to do that pun, but I did. <laughs> all right, so let's experiment some more. I'm gonna try another angle and see if this works out good. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cover this whole thing with a color just to get some paint on the overall piece. And I am not worried, well, I don't want chunks in there, but I'm not worried about a nice even coverage. I just wanna get it on there. In fact, I can even just do it this way too. But I do have it taped, so I wanna make sure I get my taped line covered and the entire piece covered just for now, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. But what I will do is, when this is completely dry, I'll remove the tape and then retape it for resin and leave a little bit of the metal showing, just like a little thin line, so that way um, the resin will bind with, or bind attach to the cup real well. Right. 
get covered. I think I got a coat on everything here. Yep. Oh, a little bit there. Okay. Just a quickie on the bottom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is pick up different colors that I've got on my tray. In fact, let me bring you down so you can see what I'm grabbing. All right, so I've got some of the glitter. I've got a gold and I've got that phthalo green color. And that's just, that's for contrast with this uh, glitter here is kind of like embedded in a gel. So it kind of comes off transparent for the most part. But I'm just gonna start laying in colors on top of this, picking up other colors and I'm gonna, it's gonna start blending on my brush. And I'm not worried about it. I've also got another palette behind me that if I wanted to pull in colors from that, I could. I think I might do that. So now I can start picking up some of the original Color Shift color in there too. Now remember, I'm just adding background. So we can get messy with this. It can go in kind of thick. I think it needs a little white. Yeah, let me get rid of this blob that was on my brush. All right, and pick up some white over here. I am not afraid to read another palette. All right, a little bit of gold. Let's see, that's same gold. What is interesting is people use the um, extreme gold um, as a color in acrylic pouring because it throws cells. And I believe it because just by playing with it here, and I'm just, you know, dipping my brush into it quickly, there were some cells that were already starting to develop. I was like, okay. Didn't plan on that. All right, I'm going to grab some of this darker green just for some contrast. And this is a very dark green. This is almost like a, an evergreen color. All right. Let me see how this is looking. So a little bit, gets into be a little bit of a hot mess stage and you're going, okay, she's lost her mind. Just a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. A little bit of the shimmer here. All right. I'm going to bring you in. All right, I'm taking a risk. I'm also hardly breathing here. Grab that and make sure it doesn't fall over. Okay. So, let me zoom you in a little bit. This is what I'm seeing that you probably weren't seeing on camera. So you see some of that gold shimmer that goes through it and you get some contrast bits and you got some lines going through and the brush strokes are really thick and so it's picking up some texture which looks, which looks really cool under resin. I mean right there that's almost like marbled. See what I'm gonna, I got cells on this. What? what? I, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not trying to get cells, but that's what the gold does. That's why everybody in acrylic pouring is going, oh, no, the 24 karat gold. Love it. See, you went up there. Okay. Anyway, got distracted by the cells. Okay. So a little bit of contrast in there gives you some spots that are really, really pretty. So, and this is kind of a tone on tone thing with a little bit of, See, that's, that's kind of pretty. 
Now it's going to be really pretty when the resin hits it. So hot mess now, really pretty later. Promise. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up. Okay, wait a minute. Did you guys hit the like button? I know you did. I appreciate everyone. And also, comment below what colors you like. What is your favorite colors? And maybe I'll do a piece on that. So this is kind of fun. I'm having fun with this tumbler, can you tell? Anyway, also in the description, I'm going to put a link to my Amazon store, which will have all like the art supplies and stuff that I use. And you can go through and pick it out if you're interested in anything like that. I get pennies on it. It doesn't affect your price at all. Um, but it does, you know, every little bit helps. Any rate, and also any resin colors I use, I get them from Mars Till Death. And there's a coupon code down below too. There you go.